Welcome to another video. Because I have been doing the floor function and the ceiling function, I came across this mathematical Olympiad problem from 1999 in Canada, and I said, let me give it a shot. It turns out that the results were quite interesting. So, after getting my first set of results, I decided to graph it and see if what I got was correct. And lo and behold, they were all correct. I said they because there's more than one answer. In fact, there are four exact solutions to this problem. Now, it would be very pleasing to see you try it before you watch the video, because then you feel as good as I feel right now. Okay, let's get into the video. I'm going to do the same thing I've done on all the problems that I've solved on this channel, which is to focus on K, K being the floor of X. You see the way this is, this belongs to an infinite number of X's because 2.1, 2.2, 2.3, 2.4, 2.5, 2.7, 7, 1, an infinite number of numbers will have the same floor, which is this guy here. So it is harder to determine what X is, but a lot easier to determine what the floor is because this is a specific number and it's an integer. So if we focus on this, it is easier to solve this equation. So what I'm going to do is focus on the floor and I'm going to use the letter K as I've always done. So what I'm going to say is we start by the definition. Remember the definition K is equal to the floor of X, right? And what does that mean? It simply means that k is less than or equal to x. This is something we must know. k must be a number that is less than or equal to x. And we know that x is less than the next integer. Okay, let's call it k plus 1. Supposing we have this to be 7.7. .7, okay, if this is 7.7, .7, then this is definitely 7. And it is clear that this number is less than 8. So what can you do with this inequality here? You can do everything with this. Everything. And I'm going to show you how this is going to help us. What we're going to do is, because I need a lot of space, I might need to... Okay, let's just start. From here, let's try and isolate this because we're we need to work with it. We have 4x squared plus 51 will be equal to 40 times. See, actually, um, because this is the floor of x, I'm going to just write k. Okay? I'm going to write k because that's the floor of x. We already defined it that way. Okay? So now, I want to try and write everything in terms of k, which means I'm going to put k here. But putting k here, because k is not equal to x, see, k is less than or equal to x, I'm doing something. Right now, the two sides are the same. But if I put k in place of x, what I'm doing is I'm reducing the value of this left-hand side. Because remember, k is less than x. So it's like there's a 3 here, and now I'm trying to replace it with 2. I'm definitely reducing the left-hand side, which means the new left-hand side will be less than the old right-hand side. See, they are the same now, but if I reduce this, I'm gonna make this less than the right-hand side. So I'm gonna change this sign to less than, and I'm gonna change this to K. And that's it. From algebra one or algebra two, you can solve this inequality, which is what we're gonna do now. So let's just solve this and see what K is likely to be. So we have four K squared, minus 40k plus 51 is less than or equal to zero. Now, this will also give you a refresher on how to solve a quadratic inequality. So, and the way I like to solve it. So I don't know how you learned it, but my way is, let's try to factor the left-hand side. Can it be factored? We just have to think of two numbers such that their product is four times 51. That's 204. 
So you think of two numbers whose product will be 204 and their sum will be negative 40. Definitely because this is positive and this is negative. Both numbers have to be negative, right? And what two numbers will those be? Well, let's quickly do some math here. We know that 4 times 51 can be written as, let's break this down to 2 times 2. We can write 51 as 3 times 17. Yes, 3 times 17 is 51. So we want to see how we can combine them so that we get, oh, I see. I see 6 here. I see 34 here. 6 and 34 will give us negative 40. So we can come here and say 4k squared minus 6k minus 34k. So now I've replaced negative 40 with this plus 51 is less than or equal to zero. So now we need to factor those algebra stuff we do. So we have what's common to these two. 2k is common, so I'm going to take out 2k and I'm going to have 2k minus 3 minus the 17 in both of these. So I'm going to take out 17 and what is left is going to be 2k negative 17 from this is minus 3 also less than or equal to zero. So ultimately, we have the same thing in these two parentheses, so that means we can factor out 2k minus 3, and what we have will be 2k minus 3 times 2k minus 17 is less than or equal to zero. So at this point, we know that if this was an equation, I would say that k is 3 halves, or k is 17 over 2, and then we'll be done, right? But it's an inequality. So those will be our critical points. So I can easily say that um, uh, critical points are, if we solve this, we're going to get 3 over 2 and 17 over 2. Those are the two points we need to test so that this will be less than or equal to zero. Remember, it's not an equation, so this is not your answer. K is neither of these two. It could be, but I know it's not. So here, you're going to put these two together. I'm going to write 2K minus 3, and I'm going to write 2K minus 17. And I have this in front of me, like this. So... The first point is 3 halves, which I think is um, 1.5. So I'm going to write this as 1.5. And the second point is 8.5. Okay, so why are we here? Well, this is what you do with this. We want to know what part of the number line will satisfy the conditions that when you multiply this by this, you're going to get a number that is less than or equal to zero. Okay, so this could be a part of our answer. And this also could be a part of our answer. So we can include these two, I see in this case. But we are looking for k, but k cannot be a decimal, so I know that you can include them. Okay, but because k is an integer, remember? Oh, I should have said all that. k is in the set of integers. Pick any number less than 1.5. I'm going to pick 1. Plug in 1 here. This is going to be 2 minus 3, which is negative, right? 2 minus 3 is negative 1. Let's put them here. Plug in 1 here also. This is going to be 2 minus 17, which is negative. So this is negative times negative, which makes it positive. Remember, what we're looking for is something less than or equal to 0. So you cannot pick your answer you're looking for cannot be below 1.5. Okay, let's go to the second region. Pick a number between 1.5 and 8.5. I'm going to pick 2, okay? Plug in 2 here. This is going to be 4 minus 3, which is a positive answer. Plug in 2 here. This is going to be uh, 4 minus 17, which is a negative answer. Positive times negative is negative. So I know the answer I'm looking for has to be between 1.5 and 8.5. That's a huge gap. Let's go to something beyond 8.5. What do we have? We're going to get, um, let's pick 10. If you put 10 here, definitely this is positive. If you put 10 here, 
20 minus 17 is going to be positive also. So this is positive. So the answer we're looking for lies between 1.5 and 8.5. So you can easily say that 1.5 is less than or equal to k, and k is less than or equal to 8.5. So from here, clearly, the value of k for this quadratic equation has to be, remember k is an integer, what integer is bigger than 1.5? It is 2, or 3, or 4, or 5, or 6, or 7, or 8. Wow, those are so many options. Let's keep this for now. Let's go back to the original equation again. Here, we're going to say that 4x squared plus 51 is um, equal to, I'm going to say 40k. Again, remember k is our floor. Okay? Now, but from here, we know that if we try to replace x with k plus 1, x is less than k plus 1. So if I put k plus 1 here, this side becomes bigger, and it's now bigger than this side. So it is 4 times k plus 1 squared plus 51 is now strictly bigger than 40k. And if I do the expansion here, I got, that's 55. Can we factor this? Yes. Let's think again. We multiply 4 by 55. Let's do the math here. 4 times 55. Well, I know this is 2 times 2. And I know this is 5 times 11. Okay? I want two numbers that will multiply, that will add up to give me negative 32. Wait. It's 10 and 22. Nice. 10 and 22. So I can write this as 4k squared minus 10k minus 22k plus 55 is greater than 0. And when I factor these two, I'm going to squeeze it in here. This is going to be 2k times 2k minus, this is going to be 5 minus, what's common? 11. 11 times 2k minus 5 is greater than 0. So it's the same story as we told before. We're going to end up with 2k minus 11 and 2k minus 5. So we have, so the critical numbers we're going to be getting here will be 11 over 2 and 5 over 2. So we're going to have our number line here. So we're going to test the points. So let's try to test. Pick a number here that's less than 2.5. 0 is a good number. Put 0 here. This is going to be negative. Put zero here, this is going to be negative. Negative times negative is positive. Remember what we're looking for is any product that is greater than zero, which means it is positive. So we need our answers to come from this region. Let's go here. Pick a number between 2.5 and 5.5. I like to pick three. If I put three here, this is six minus 11, it's negative. Six minus five is uh, positive. So the product of these two will be negative. We don't want anything negative. So you cannot pick any answer between 2.5 and 5.5. So this region is not part of our answer. Okay, let's go here. Pick a number after 5.5. It's going to be, let's pick 6. Put 6 here. This is going to be 12 minus 11. That's positive. Put 6 here. It's 12 minus 5. Positive. So this is positive. So our answers will come before 2.5 and after 5.5. So we know that k is less than 2.5 and k is greater than 5.5 because those are the regions where we can find k and it is neither of these two. So if you combine this with this inequality, this with this, what you're gonna notice is there is a k after 1.5 before 2.5. What do you think that k is? Yes, that k is 2. You got a k there. I can say that 1.5, let's draw this, 1.5 is less than or equal to k, and k is less than 2.5. Remember, k is an integer. There's only one integer in this region. That implies k is equal to 2, which implies k is equal to 2. You go again, we know that k has to be greater than 5.5, .5, 
So we know that 5.5 is less than k, and k is less than or equal to 8.5. What does it mean? Well, how many k's are in this region? Remember integers, it has to be 6, 7, and 8. Those are the options. k equals 6, 7, and 8. We found four different k's. And I promise you, those are the k's. They are the floors of all values of x that satisfy this equation. So now let's find what x is. Since we know our k, it is now super easy. Let's see if we can squeeze everything in here, okay? So, number one, for k equals two, we're gonna go here and say, this implies four x squared, 4x squared minus 4t times 2, because that's our k, plus 51 equals 0. We want to know what x is, because now we found the k. This is 4x squared minus 8t plus 51. That's going to be 4x squared minus 29. This is 4x squared minus 29 equals zero, which means 4x squared equals 29, which means that x squared equals 29 over four, which means that x is equal to, will it be plus or minus? That's our question. It cannot be plus or minus in this case because we've restricted the floor to positive integers, as you can see. So our x cannot be plus or minus. We have to take only the plus version because if it's plus or minus, then our k could have been negative. But our k is positive, so we're taking only the positive version. So this is gonna be, if you take the square root of 29, we don't know what it is. We know, but it's irrational. But the square root of four is two. So it might as well just be the square root of 29 divided by the square root of four, which is just two. So this is the first answer we're gonna get. Let's call it one. First option, first option, x1 is square root of 29 over two. Now, what is the second option? It's when your k is six. The third option is when k is seven and when k is eight. Am I gonna solve it? No. All you have to do is repeat exactly what I did. Instead of using k equals two, use k equals six, seven, Eight, and your answers should look like this. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.